Hey, Jocelyn with Walter's World, and we're here in Tokyo, and today's video is about um, some tips and things you should know before you bring your kids to Japan. So first and foremost, you ought to know that Japan is really safe, which is awesome for the kids because they get a little bit more autonomy. Like, they can walk a little bit ahead of you or kind of explore things a little bit, um, and they don't have to always be right by your side like they do in some other countries. That said, some streets have just sort of, well, they don't have sidewalks. They just have like a little narrow passageway for pedestrians, which could make you just a little bit nervous as a parent. Um, but as long as your kids realize that, you know, the people drive on the left and they need to look right before crossing the street, that doesn't factor in too much because the drivers here are very orderly and pedestrians have the right of way. Do watch out for bikes though. Um, I, I'm not quite sure where the bikes are supposed to be and where the pedestrians are supposed to be, but just be aware. Um, they will ding their little bell at you if you're, if you're in their way, but just be aware that there are bikes and make sure that your kids are aware of that too. The second thing about bringing um, your kids to Japan is um, that this is a very quiet country and it's rather taboo to um, speak on trains and metros and things like that. It's okay if you do it quietly, but that's not always easy for kids. Um, our kids had a really hard time the other night. We had 17 metro stops in a row and our kids had a really tough time sitting that long. Um, they did sit across from one another and they played a game called chopsticks and I don't know, it has something to do with math and they bang their fingers together, but it's a silent game. So if you know that game, teach it to your kids. It was brilliant because they just started playing it themselves and it was, it was a good way to keep them occupied because sitting for that long in utter silence is really hard for kids. Number three, Japan is really clean. I, I love that Japan is clean. I know that when my kids go into a bathroom, I don't have to worry about grody toilets or, you know, nasty water taps or handles or anything else. And not only is it clean, in bathrooms and things like that. It's clean on the streets. There's very little garbage on the on the side of the road or anything else. I don't know how a city of 35 million people in Tokyo can be as clean as it is, but it is. That said, love it, but I hardly ever find a, a trash can. So if your kids, you know, are eating and they've got snacks and whatnot, um, it's, you gotta kinda tote that trash around with you because there's not always um, a, a garbage can readily available. So a lot of the sites that you'll see in different cities in Japan are quite spread out. So there's a lot of walking. Um, you can take metros and things in some of the cities, but um, by and large, you need to have comfortable shoes for you and for your kids. And with that, it's really important to have shoes that are easily slip on, slip off kind of shoes. Um, because there are many restaurants and different places where they have tatami floors and you can't wear your shoes on those. So make it easy for yourself and your kids and make sure they have tennis shoes or things that are um, maybe not tie, maybe just slip on, slip off or Velcro, something quick and easy. Being that things are really spread out, um, it takes a lot out of the kids. And even though things are really orderly, there's still massive amounts of people. It seems like no matter what town you're in, there's a, there's a press of humanity. So I would suggest taking your kids out and letting them run. Right now we're in a park, I'm making this video, our kids are out running around acting like fools, but they're getting some of their energy out and that's really important anytime you're traveling, but particularly in places where things are so spread out like they are here in Japan. To add on to that, there aren't tons of parks, so when you find one, let them run right then and there. Okay, hang on, here comes Loudmouth. Shh! Liam! 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 You have to turn your voice down just a little bit, okay? okay. So the sites here in Japan are temple and shrine heavy, which is really cool, but after you see 10 or 12, the kids start getting really antsy. So, um, to do that, again, find a space where they can run and play and get that energy out. Also, try to find um, some toy stores they have we've been to several toy stores that are like I don't know five six seven stories tall so that's always a good place to take the kids we found a wonderful drum museum here in Tokyo and we spent like an hour in there and the kids were just banging on drums the whole time so make sure that you schedule those kinds of things in between all the shrines and temples because it gets old quick for kids to go along with that scheduling good time for kids 
Japan and Tokyo in particular have a lot of pop culture things. There's a great manga museum in Kyoto and there's gaming everywhere and you can find a lot of things for the kids to do. So, and that actually really appeals to our 11 year old, sort of that tween, teenage kid. Um, there's actually a lot for them to do and so just be aware of that and be ready to stop every now and then and let the kids jump in on some of the crazy cool pop culture that happens in Japan. If you have a picky eater, um, you're gonna have problems in Japan. You better be, you better be ready. Our youngest isn't a huge fan of sushi, but he'll eat, he'll eat some serious amounts of rice. So rice and noodles work out really well for us. So be aware that there's not always a ton of options. However, there are a lot of convenience stores and the convenience stores have lots of different things, snacks and things that the kids can probably, you can probably find something that they'll eat in a convenience store. And convenience store food in Japan isn't like convenience store food anywhere else in the world. It's really excellent. So take some time, get to know your local convenience store and get in there and get the kids some food. There's fun, funky candies, there are buns and noodles and there's even sushi. So also, if you happen to have food allergies or your kids have food allergies before you get here or immediately upon arriving, have someone write down that your children or you cannot eat these X foods in Japanese because there isn't a lot of English speaking here and you need to be aware of that and you need to be able to make people aware of it in Japanese. So do that before you get here or ASAP. And I wouldn't really rely on, you know, Google Translate or something. It would really be best to have a native speaker or someone who is very bilingual be able to write that down for you in Japanese. Also, extra little hint, the robot restaurant in Tokyo, not a restaurant. So nearby to Tokyo are a couple of amusement parks. One is Universal, the other is Disney Tokyo, and then there is one called Tokyo Joypolis. I think I'm saying that right. Anyway, there are at least three cool amusement parks within, you know, a couple hour or so of Tokyo. So you're very able to get out and get some kid stuff done. Have one good, really kid-centric day. Be aware though, the lines are really long, so it might be best to go during the week rather than on a weekend. So number nine is hotels, what you need to know. Basically, hotel rooms in Japan are not for a family of four. You might be able to get three people into a typical hotel room, but generally speaking, if you have a family of four, you either need to rent two rooms or you can stay at a ryokan or minshuku. These are both traditional hotels and you'll have a tatami floor and futons, so just, you know, flat mattresses laid out on the floor where, you know, you take your shoes off and then you just lie down on, on these beds on the floor. So um, you can get more people into a room that way if need be, but be aware that you're not gonna get a typical Western style, a style hotel room with two queen size beds where you can get a family of four in there. We had, in Kyoto, we rented an apartment with the Soji screens, very traditional old building, and it was amazing. And the kids really liked it, we loved it. It was just, it was like stepping back in time a little bit. And we were able to sleep all four of us quite easily. So things like Airbnb um, and HomeAway might be your best bet for a family larger than three people. Just a little side note, there are pharmacies and you can get anything you need from diapers to formula and baby food and all of that. But if you do need prescription medication, you need to bring that with you along with the prescription, especially if it's any kind of painkiller or steroid or things like that, things that are really controlled here. You really need to just bring the prescription with you. Um, just be aware of that ahead of time, but don't worry about regular medicines and stuff like that. You know, if you have to take an Advil or something, it's no big deal. But with prescriptions, you need to be prepared. Our 10th point about Japan with kids is that it's expensive. Japan is not an inexpensive country by any means. So be prepared for um, spending a little more on food and hotels and things like that. The good thing is that places like this park and um, many other museums and things are less expensive for kids or kids under 12 may not even pay at all. So 
be aware that there is kid pricing and things and so you might only have to pay adult admissions. The other thing is there are all the shrines and things you'll go to, those are all free. So you don't have to worry about paying for things like that, but do be aware that you're gonna spend a little more on a vacation in Japan than you would in many other places in the world. So those are our 10 helpful hints for bringing your kids to Japan. I hope they help you because this is a wonderful place and it's a great place to bring your kids. They'll have a lot of fun and you will too. If you would like more, if you'd like more videos on Japan, we have five things you'll love and hate, um, 10 things that'll shock you about Japan or Tokyo and Kyoto and like a million other Japan videos. Log on to waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all the social media. So um, I hope that you enjoyed it and we'll see you later. Happy travels. These crows really do not like me. <laughs> okay.